It's a seven point lead at the half for Southern Illinois, but the score a little bit deceptive. SIU scored five points in the last 10 seconds of the first half to take that seven point lead. Dave Revson, Doug Gottlieb, and this has been a pretty even game. Oh, it's been a great game, especially with Creighton. The ability for them to slow the pace of the game, but they can't be careless and turn the basketball over. I really think they need to attack Southern Illinois much the way they did to start this game, which was in transition. Nate Funk driving, kicking off to a team. And Nate Funk creating for himself. The problem with the Slukies are they're so talented in many different ways. Their best player, Darren Brooks, does it with the pass, creating things for his teammates. And then at the end of the half, a huge play. The pressure, time running down. He gets a steal. He leads his team in steals. He's about to pass Larry Bird on the NBC all-time steals list. Then Stetson Harrison creating transition baskets. This is how the Salukis are effective by scoring off of their defense. At just five points for Brooks, but you talked about it right off the top. He did so many things well. The rebounding, the assists that we saw, the steals. Darren Brooks doing it all, and Nate Funk, another guy who also can do a lot of things well. He leads him in scoring and rebounding, led him in scoring and assists last year. So he's a guy like Brooks and has a lot of different things in his arsenal. Yeah, three assists, no turnovers. Tyler McKinney does have four turnovers in the first half, and he's been doubled off the pick and roll. We'll see what type of adjustments Creighton has made. Now Funk nearly turns it over. Shot clock down to 10. Mathis hanging in the air. Can't get it to go. And Stetson Harrison has the rebound. And here comes SIU. It's Tatum. Now Darren Brooks. You see Craig very solid defensively in the half court. Their problems have been defending the transition game of SIU. Warren misses. And here comes Tyler McKinney. McKinney tries to get it ahead. Tatum knocks it away, but Watts comes up with it for Creighton. Now Tolliver inside gets held by Josh Warren, his first. And when you look at the first half stats, Dave, I mean, very, very similar. Obviously, SIU shooting a little bit better percentage, re out rebounding Creighton, which has been the bugaboo. But assists and turnovers, uh, you know, Creighton leading one, trailing in another. A close game until the last two plays of the half. As Funk gets three of those points back, he now has 10. And it's a four-point game. Uh, he's got a perfect-looking shot, doesn't he? Harrison misses down low. Funk refined that shot in his basement in the furnace room. They had an eight-foot ceiling down there. His dad put up a hoop, and he'd be down there at all hours. They'd have to get him out of there to go to school in the morning, and they'd have to get him out of there to put him in bed at night. Just one of the many players Dane Altman's gotten from the state of Iowa. Of course, Brody Darren played there last year. Nate Funk plays here now. And Tyler McKinney. And how about Kyle Corver and Ryan, Ryan Sears, two of the greats. And Kyle Corver, we'll see him All-Star Weekend next week in the NBA in the, in the rookie sophomore game. If you're not familiar with the geography, Omaha is right on the Nebraska-Iowa border. So it's kind of a natural place for them to recruit. There's been some really good talent coming out of Iowa the last decade or so. Tatum misses the pull-up. Shaw goes over the back. Now the fans don't like it, but a pretty good call, especially on the road. And the thing that Creighton's been able to do here in the second half, in addition to limiting their turnovers, is one shot and done with SIU. They only scored three points themselves, but the reason the gap has closed from seven to four is one and done with SIU. They beat you with steals, leading to transition baskets, and second shot opportunities. Well, Southern Illinois yet to score here in the second half. Let it by seven at the break. They've won 33 straight Missouri Valley Conference home games. 21 straight home games overall. And now an ear steal at midcourt. Shot clock down to eight as McKinney retrieves it. This is Mathis. Mathis right into the lane. Little scoop. Can't get it to go. And Southern Illinois has it. Tatum now gets grabbed by Mathis. Now you get the feeling the first team to start getting in an offensive rhythm and getting a flow. If it's Southern Illinois, they can create some separation. But if it's Creighton, and this is the second little close shot that Mathis has missed. He missed a floater on the first possession when they held till about five seconds in the shot clock. And then you get in there close. I'm sure Dane Altman's saying, go in there and finish. He's not going to block your shot. He's trying to take a charge. 37-33, Southern Illinois. 
Two teams that between them have made eight NCAA tournament appearances in the last six years. Southern Illinois has been to three straight as an at-large. Creighton had a streak of five straight NCAA tourney bids. Ended last year. They ended up in the NIT. Tolliver trying to get some inside points, something we haven't seen much of in this game. Now the steal. Tatum ahead of the pack. Uh, he just smells points. He turned it over on the previous possession, but he gets it. He sees a gap, and he sticks his nose in there and scores. 14 points off turnovers now for Southern Illinois. You see what I mean? Neither team can score for three or four minutes, and all of a sudden, bang, bang, two straight buckets. But transition, both these teams are much better at scoring in transition, but this is conference play. Both coaches understand that, and the idea is to slow the other team. Unfortunately, it's working for both teams. <laughs> now Brooks gets hacked. Going to go against Tyler McKinney. That's going to be three on Tyler McKinney. And talk about how valuable he is to this team, Doug. He's going to have to go out of the game. Yeah, it leads them obviously in assists, but they're just a much sounder team offensively, getting into their sets. He's also a big point guard. We're talking about the Iowa connection. But uh, he he has done some amazing things without putting up huge numbers. He's he's a Darren Brooks in his own sense. Young man sidelined last year, two cornea transplants. Remarkable comeback for him, and they are a decidedly better team with him in the lineup. Stetson Harrison hitting the three. He now has 11. And Stetson Harrison, we talked about he was suspended for the first three games of the year, two exhibition games in one game, but he's struggled with his jump shot this year. Told me today he's been putting in a bunch of extra time trying to get his feet set, get in balance, as he did on that jump shot. And Creighton calling timeout there as Mathis was surrounded. Says SIU timeout, actually a Creighton timeout there. Well, coming up, it's the question SIU fans hear all the time. What exactly is a Saluki, the origins of this unique nickname? Next. Yeah. Rivalry week presented by Cisco Systems. The Salukis on top by six. The question of what exactly is a Saluki one you hear a lot around Ooh. here. Saluki, an Egyptian hunting dog, the world's oldest purebred. Records dating to 3600 B.C. chronicling the life of the Saluki. And in 1951, the students here at Southern Illinois voted on that as the school's mascot. This area of Illinois is known as Egypt for its fertile soil. And so that's how they came up with an Egyptian hunting dog as the mascot. And there were times last night when we were driving to our hotel, I felt like we were outside of Cairo, actually. Certainly seemed like a long drive, didn't it? A little bit of a remote location here, about two hours from St. Louis. Nate Funk misses the pull-up. I suppose it's not remote if you live here. <laughs> it's all relevant. It's home. <laughs> well, and that's what's interesting about this team. Our, about half of SIU's team is from St. Louis, which is polar opposites from Carbondale. Shaw, nice passing there, and ends up in two for Matt Shaw. Shaw, not far from here, is his home, in Centralia, Illinois. As Moats misses the three, Tatum is fouled on the rebound by Nate Funk. So Southern Illinois, with its largest lead, starting to pull away just a bit in this big Missouri Valley Conference rivalry. Back in Carbondale, I've got to believe the red wig would be a bit of a concern for Linda. <laughs> well, Dave, scoring is at a premium here in the second half, and Southern Illinois and Creighton both trying to find ways to score in the half-court offense. As you see, Matt Shaw, the freshman, the pick and slip, and with Creighton overplaying the pick and roll because the guards just have such a great ability to come off that pick and roll and turn the corner and score. It's a great way to get offense, cheap, easy offense off the pick and slip. Shaw with eight points already exceeding his season average. Started the last six games now averaging just over eight points a game as a starter. So he's picked up the offense, and that's exactly what Southern Illinois needs. A little more inside punch. And now Shaw on the baseline misses, and Funk gets the rebound. Mathis, nice wow. reverse. Wow. You know, he missed the first two floaters of the second half. Missed the floater and then missed an underhand scoop shot, but that's taken it to the basket with authority. Wow. How nice about catch, that, Dave? Very nice. 
I was wide open, Doug. Yeah, but now you turn the basketball over. Are I you going to give the ball to the I official? Uh, yeah, it was. It yeah, was. You cannot make a pass with one hand, but look, uh, going up and underneath the basket, the athletic ability is evident there for Johnny Mack. I'll tell you what, it's tough when you're sitting next to a former guy, guy who led the nation in assists. I mean, one bad pass, come on. Uh, one bad pass is enough to get Eddie Sutton to take you out. Why shouldn't I say something about it? All right. You're schooled by a tough one. Yeah. Foul there on Tony Young. That's going to be his third. As we remind you, a full day of college hoops on ESPN concludes with ACC action tonight. J.J. Reddick and Duke take it on John Gilchrist and Maryland. Team that knocked them from the ranks of the unbeaten earlier this year. So two teams that flat out despise one another going head to head. What better way to finish off rivalry week than that? And Digger Phelps, Jay Billis, Reese Davis, college game day. They'll be there. I wonder who Digger's going to predict will be the star of the game since his predictions. He, he called Notre Dame, beat oh, Boston he's College. He's been hot, hasn't he? He has been hot. Yeah, he's been really hot. I'm in Vegas. That's the guy I'm listening to tonight. Four fouls now on Tony Young. So he's going to have to check out for Southern Illinois. And it's a guy who's been a real spark plug off the bench for them, so that could be big. Yeah, he obviously can shoot the ball, stretch the defense, but especially his defense at the point of pressure. As soon as you cross half court, that's what he's affected by. Johnny Mathis, is, after missing those first two shots now, two consecutive times, taking the ball to the basket, one getting a bucket, now creating a foul. Nine points now for Mathis, who's, like several of these Creighton players, worked for ESPN a couple summers on the College World Series. Of course, he's in Omaha every year, one of the great traditions in that town. Dale back in there for Southern Illinois. Saw a little bit of action in the first half. Where's number two? Four point game. Southern Illinois led it by as many as eight. Hairston. How about that? From Stetson Hairston. Well, the lights are on, the popcorn's popping. You gotta step up when you're a senior, especially the only guy who played in the Sweet 16 team a couple years ago. He was a starter on that team, is just a freshman. Like I said, struggling with his shot, but he's put in the hours in the gym and seems to be paying off this afternoon. Well, Miller gets fouled there. It's gonna go against Hairston, his second. And Creighton continues to spread the defense and take the ball to the basket, create foul opportunities, get into the free throw line. It's all about balance with this offense. As you watch, four out, one in, constantly cutting off that high post who rolls into the low post, but keeping the floor spaced and balanced allows those lanes for penetration. Also plays very well under their perimeter shooting, which is outstanding. Best three-point shooting team in the Missouri Valley Conference. Flip side is they get only 25% of their scoring from inside players. Remember, this is a team beat Ohio State, beat Missouri and Kansas City at the Guardians Classic, beat Xavier at Xavier, but has struggled after that 8-1 start from 7-8-6. Also beat Nebraska. They have owned Nebraska, that in-state rivalry, with the exception of the NIT game last year. Darren Brooks. One of the best all-around players in the Missouri Valley Conference. He was the player of the year last year. He's fouled on the way to the hoop. It's going to go against Jeffrey Day. His third. Brooks still stuck on five points. At the line for Southern Illinois, number one, Darren Brooks. Keep an eye on his shot here, Dave, as he will shoot his jump shot, and his release has his left thumb involved his left thumb becomes involved with the right hand release the left hand is supposed to be a bookend hand and if there's one thing you point out at why he's not a better shooter from distances he gets that left thumb into his jump shot and that's probably what keeps him from being a great three-point shooter so if you're a coach do you try to mess with that i probably not till he finishes with school i mean something you could fix over a summer you know you can tape that left thumb to his hand because you don't need it but it'll throw off your shot for a good you know four or five months Mathis trading, hanging, and missing. Now Hairston. It's going to be Southern Illinois ball. Brooks 
I guess you figure maybe why mess with success. I mean, yeah. guy was the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year last year, but perhaps what you're saying here is in terms of uh, advancing with his game. Yeah, advancing with his game. I mean, now he shoots 35 percent, which is not terrible. Just the one thing that separates him from being, you know, arguably one of the top 25 players in all of college basketball is the ability to stretch the defense with long range. And he does everything else well except shoot beyond about 20, 21 feet. And Matt Painter said last year, if there's no three-point line, he's the first yep. guy you take. Uh, I think he's the first guy you take anyway in this league. Well, in this league, I think he meant yeah. just about anyway. <laughs> Here's Hitman missing inside, and Owen has it for the Saluki. You think Matt Painter would take him to Purdue this year? I think they'd take just about anyone off this team. Yeah. Been a tough year for Gene Cady, not the way he wanted to go out, certainly. And again, this staff very much intertwined. Painter, Bruce Weber, Chris Lowry, all of them were on the staff here a few years ago. Now all gone their separate ways. Hairston oh, hits the three. Stetson Hairston is hot, and he's got 17. Oh, he is absolutely feeling it. So the lead is up to nine. It's the biggest it's been the whole game. And Dana Altman wants to talk things over. Uh, this is a difficult place to play. They've won 52 out of their last 53 ball games in the last four years in this building. 33 in a row, conference home wins. And the reason is they just maul you defensively. And if they get hot, they start to hit a couple of shots. And a guy like Stetson Harrison is a perfect example. He can shoot the basketball. He shot better throughout his career. But he struggled so far this season. Now he's hot tonight. That's why they have the big lead. As Stetson Harrison came in shooting just 40 percent, but having a big game here today and doing it a lot of different ways, Doug. Yeah, coming off the screen, catching. But again, sometimes a dunk gets a guy going, gets his juices flowing. Now you see him shooting off the dribble. He's got confidence. All of a sudden, deeper range. Now you have almost NBA range. He's feeling good about himself. And this is a guy who, as a senior, you feel like, hey, you want to get him the basketball when he gets hot because he understands rhythm and flow, and I've hit a couple shots, now I'll take some more. Well, Harrison, six of nine from the field now, four of six from three-point range. Clearly feeling confident, and as you said, Doug, that's not something that's really flowed from him this year. Yeah. With the shot, now Funk. Creighton in desperate need of a hoop. Mathis to the hoop, and he gets fouled. So Johnny Mathis will shoot a pair when we come back. It is Southern Illinois by nine over the Blue Jays. Oh Rivalry week presented by Cisco Systems. Southern Illinois by nine over Creighton. Missouri Valley Conference has been dominated by these two 134 wins in the last six seasons for Creighton Southern Illinois 132 no one else in the Valley has more than 101 so you understand why this is a great rivalry and Doug this is a critical juncture of the game for the Blue Jays and a critical juncture of the season for the Blue Jays 15 and 9 and in danger of not only falling out of the league but falling out of contention for another at least NIT berth and with res respectability on the line. It's now eight points with the made free throw. You cut it to seven. They have to get some steals, get some stops, make some baskets, get this thing close, and put the pressure on Southern Illinois. Johnny Mathis hitting the first free throw. He moves into double figures with 10. We'll see what Dane Altman's crew can do defensively here now. And you're seeing the one, two, two pressure cutting off that pass to the middle slowing the pace and at some point they'll look to get a steal if there's a lazy pass made but Slokies really haven't done anything great in their half court offense they've just stepped up and hit three threes three for three from three point range in the second half now there's the trap in the first pass Jared Brooks Missouri Valley Conference player of the year he's number one for Southern Illinois also the defensive player of the year we've seen a lot of good defense from the Salukis in this one shot clock down to four Hairston's been the man he misses that one 
for the loose ball, and it's a help ball that's going to go to Southern Illinois. Again, the pick and roll on the strong side of the zone with two guards on the weak side. One, which is Stetson Harrison at the three-point line at the free throw extended, and one in the corner. They're looking to come off that screen roll, get to the middle lane, and create a shot for one of those two wing players, either on the wing or in the corner. Now, something to keep an eye on. Tyler McKinney has checked back in for Creighton. McKinney has three fouls in the game, but he's really kind of their glue guy. He's not a guy who puts together very impressive stats, but historically they're about six points better in games he plays than in games he doesn't. So we'll see whether or not this might give Creighton a little bit of a spark here as Hairston gets called for the walk. Take a look at our Cisco Systems game track. Southern Illinois shooting the ball far better. Stetson Harrison has been the story for them. His best game in the last dozen games in terms of points. And Nate Funk, as expected, having a good game for the Blue Jays. And as expected, Southern Illinois cuts down the offensive scoring of their opponent. Lamar Owen finishes ahead of everyone. Chris Lowry preaches defense into offense. Says they spend about 60% of their practice time on defense, and we're seeing some of that right here, Doug. Yeah, well, that's how they generate offense. They're not great in the half court. They're explosive, though, in the full court when they create it off a steal, off a rebound. 16 points off turnovers now for the Salukis. Woo! Woo! It'll be Creighton ball off the miss. Chris Lowry's team on top by nine. Uh, this is a team that holds their opponent to 60 points or less more often than not in conference play best point percentage excuse me, points per game defense in the league and you look at how difficult a place this is to win 21 in a row 52 and one over the last four years and that's what's so staggering the only team to beat them in that span was charlotte yep. came in here and won a non-conference game so it's 33 straight missouri valley conference home wins Remarkable run for the Salukis as Funk misses and Southern Illinois going to try to build on what is a nine-point lead. Now Hairston. Brooks has been relatively quiet, gets a screen there, instead tries to slip it inside to Warren, and McKinney comes out of there for Creighton with the loose ball. Think about Charlotte. Charlotte comes in here and wins last year. They also started off the season with a win at Syracuse the night they raised the banner for the national champion. Big shot there by Kellen Milliner. Well, that's one of those programs similar to Southern Illinois, a team that's had some real success in the NCAA tournament. Bobby Lutz does such a good job there with Charlotte. School a lot of people don't talk about until March, but we'll really follow the mid-majors know how good Charlotte is. Yeah, well, it's just like Southern Illinois. You know, until you see them on your bracket in March, now you start to do some research. How good is this team? This is a team that if you don't have quality guard play, you can't handle their pressure defensively. They will eat you alive. Now Brooks going to try the three and might be unconventional. It works there, though. Nine points down for Brooks. Yeah, it's not that he can't shoot. It's that he doesn't like to take it. He doesn't have great range. But just like last year, when they beat Creighton in Omaha, we called that game. When they broke it open, it was when Darren Brooks hit two three-point shots. A silent assassin. Guy who just hangs around and then gets you. Near steal there by Brooks. Miller misses the pull-up. Lamar Owen the rebound. And he's fouled. And Dana Altman is furious. Now, Brooks about to make a little Missouri Valley Conference history. We'll talk about that when we come back. It's in our block. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Cisco Systems. This is the power of the network now. And in part by GMC Trucks and SUVs. We are professional grade. Back in Carbondale, it's a nine-point lead for Southern Illinois over Creighton and Darren Brooks. Despite the fact offensively he hasn't done a ton in terms of scoring, contributing in so many ways as he always does for Southern Illinois. Two steals in this game, one shy of passing Larry Bird for fifth all-time on the Missouri Valley Conference steals list. That's a pretty good company. That's not bad company, no. And obviously, this is a conference with such pride on players that have gone on and played at the next level. Larry playing, obviously, at Indiana State and Terre Haute, but 
Darren Brooks, and he'll continue to pass people's record, especially here at Southern Illinois. Think about this again. Leads the team in scoring, rebounding, steals, and assists. And I have heard that at times when they go on a and a team charter, he offers to fly the plane. The pilots, however, say, you know, that's fine, we can fly it ourselves. Career leader in steals, sixth in points and assists at Southern Illinois. Nice move. Warren misses, tipped in by Owen. So Lamar Owen providing a nice spark in the second half. But Brooks, a player not very heavily recruited, Southwest Missouri, Arkansas Little Rock, as McKinney is fouled on the way to the hoop. Was actually, in terms of the profile of the schools, it's a high school quarterback, and Iowa and Wisconsin wanted to walk on for football. He only played his senior year, and he impressed him so much. Says he can throw the ball 60 yards in the air, and I'll tell you what's interesting. You know, Arkansas Little, Little Rock recruit and Porter Mosier, now the head coach at Illinois State. They have really surprised people in this league, and the Salukis, that while they have Wichita State coming into this building later on in February, they also have to go to Illinois State. And Normal Illinois, difficult place to play with the Redbirds have it going as Porter Mosher has it this year. Now he's done a tremendous job because that's a program that was really down for a few years there. And they are right back in the thick of things in the Missouri Valley a Conference that is ranked eighth in the nation in the RPI. So you divide Division One into thirds, ten conferences each. This would qualify as a, a high major, at least in that concept. Well, they, they deserve multiple bids, and they have gotten it nearly every year. Now, Jamal Tatum is a guy, the one guy on this team that can really go, create, and pull up and shoot off the dribble. We saw it the last possession offensively in the first half. Now here in the second half, they want to spread the floor, create those lanes, or he can go one-on-one. -on -one. He's a much better mid-range jump shooter than he is a long-range jump shooter. The foul was on Tyler McKinney, his fourth. And he is down on the bench. There you see Tyler McKinney, the young man who survived two corneal transplants. Thought uh, this time last year, doctors were telling him he might lose his eye. Remarkable story. Owen. Now Brooks. This would be big. Can't get it to go. It's tipped around at Tatum. Does a good job controlling for the Salukis. And Southern Illinois calls timeout. And Milliners really frustrated he thought the pass had already been thrown and it should have been a turnover as it is southern illinois gets the timeout as we remind you tomorrow it's february frenzy on espn2 the early games these are women's games including duke and maryland kansas state and oklahoma vandy and tennessee you'll see some of the great players in the country again if one of these games involves a team near your home you'll be able to see that game in its entirety but aside from that we'll take you to the best game as the action di dictates you see some of the other games uconn and rutgers purdue and minnesota should be a great day tennessee coming off a loss at lsu earlier this week on thursday matter of fact so that'll be fun now you get to you get to go to norman oklahoma one of my favorite old stomping grounds huh yeah, you've got a lot of fans there in Norman, I know. I, the new I, days of Oklahoma I'm State. not sure that's actually true, but uh, hey, look, this is a wonderful team and a wonderful story in Darren Brooks. And it's the ability to create offense off their defense. This was a huge play. End of the first half, only up five. They struggled scoring the basketball. He gets a steal at the end of the half, and now they've really extended that lead. They found ways to create offense. 12 points. We're in danger of a blowout. Craig doesn't get it going soon. Well, they got five points in an eight-second span there at the end of the first half. That was probably the most critical juncture of the game. Certainly up until this point, as Tatum does a great job chasing down his own miss. And a fresh 35 for the Salukis. And the entire coaching staff jumped up and said, reset things, slow it down. And the entire crowd jumped up. They appreciate the effort. That was a quality shot by Jamal Tatum. He sees the miss. And, of course, the shooter knows where the ball is coming off to. Tatum. That's a good look right between those two, isn't it? It's going to be Southern Illinois ball. Yeah, they're really going at it. Yeah, quick and quicker. Johnny Mathis guarding Jamal, Jamal Tatum. Shot clock is under 10. Hairston misses the three. Battle for the rebound, and Watts is tied up by Owen, and they're going to call the foul on Lamar Owen. Now, this is still the style of game that Southern Illinois wants. They want to be the aggressor. They want to be up in you defensively, and then offensively, they shoot it, try and go get it. And 
no one's a guy. How about he was the Mr. Soccer in the state of Kentucky coming out of high school? Great all-around athlete. So this is TV hair, by the way. Told me that before the game. Oh, yeah? TV hair. What do you think? That's a good look. Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't choose it personally, no, okay. but you know, be a bit of a stretch for me. So Dane Watts hits the first free throw. Guy was 6-1 as a high school freshman. Now 6-8 four years later, and he's got eight points. Stetson Hairston's been the story here for Southern Illinois. As Creighton's done a good job shutting down Taryn Brooks, but Brooks has distributed it nicely. Five assists in the game, and Hairston's been one of the beneficiaries. Now a steal by Brooks. He passes Larry Bird for fifth on the all-time Missouri Valley Conference list, but then he turns it right back over. Well, he didn't set a turnover's mark, but that is a turnover. But, hey, he gets the steal, passes Larry Bird on the all-time steals mark. Congratulations, Darren Brooks. Just a, a tremendous player. Now, for Creighton, they are far from out of this game because, remember, they're the best three-point shooting team in this league, and they kind of live or die by it. They don't rebound the ball particularly well, especially for Dana Altman's taste, but with that ability to shoot the basketball, you can come back in a hurry. Milliner with the pull-up, ah. misses. It's a big Creighton ball. I should say Southern Illinois ball. Uh, I, I think that ball was actually off Josh Warren. That's kind of what I thought, too. Yep. And we are being told that did not count as a steal because he stepped out of bounds before he had control of the basketball. Okay. So well, Larry Bird's record is safe for at least pack. a minute or two. Offensive foul there called on Tatum. This is a heck of a battle. Now, these guys are really going at it. Yeah, well, Tyler McKinney out of the game, four personal fouls, and Johnny Mathis has just been pressuring Jamal Tatum. Let's see if he has. This is Darren Brooks going for the record with the steal. Right foot out of bounds. Yeah, that's a good call. Well, Doug, I'm told now that the overrule has been overruled. Wow. Yeah. They wanted to see him set it here at home, apparently. It has been credited with the steal, so. He's now fifth all-time in the Missouri Valley Conference steals list, somebody, one ahead of Larry Bird. Somebody at home call, call from the bullpen? Exactly. I don't know. It's like baseball. I just give it to Error. That's not an error. That's a hit. Important possession there for Creighton. They missed an opportunity to get this thing back under 10. And Southern Illinois just very deliberate offensively these last few possessions, Doug. Certainly in no hurry, and then this is their stop. Yeah, but Creighton a tough out. I mean, a tough out in, in every sense. Five and four on the road. They struggled a bit at home for a Creighton team. You know, back when they played at Muni, they were a great home team. Quest Center hasn't been as kind to them. Pull up there by Tatum. He is so much better this year than he is than he was last year. Last year was a bit wild. Of course, he came off the bench. He was trying to score points in a hurry. But he's really found his niche shooting those mid-range pull-up jump shots. Milliner, big three for three Kellen point. Milliner. He now has eight. That's what I'm saying. I mean, now it's it's nine, and they're still very much at arm's distance because of their ability to shoot the basketball. Well, they have six players coming into this game with 21 or more threes. The only other team in the country that can make that claim is Vanderbilt. So you understand just how potent Creighton could be from long range, and by no means is this game over. Brooks. It's going to be Creighton ball. So Darren Brooks, after passing Larry Bird, trying to lead his team to a win as Rivalry Week rolls on here on ESPN2. David Amber with this update. We got another score from the Missouri Valley Conference. Northern Iowa squeaking out a one-point win over Illinois State. The Panthers beat the Redbirds despite going 5 of 13 on the charity stripe. They've now won three of their last four. Dave Doug, back to you. Our game certainly of much interest here. Thanks a lot, David. Southern Illinois on top of Creighton, 63-54. And we're talking about the potential, how many teams the Missouri Valley might get in. Southern Illinois, the projected RPI on the ESPN Insider RPI, Doug, is 14. Is this team safe no matter what happens? I don't think it's no matter what happens. They have Illinois State on the road, Wichita State at home. They're two remaining games that they could they, that they could lose. You have to win at least one of those two games. And then I think they're in pretty good shape. Remember, they beat Vanderbilt. They beat UTEP, who's another mid-major, who if they don't win the WAC, I think they, uh, they don't win the WAC tournament, I think they get in. But you got to win one of those two games. And then, of course, tonight in order to guarantee yourself an at-large bid. 
A tank comes up at the loose ball, so a turnover there by Southern Illinois. The Blue Jays try to hack into that nine point deficit. Funk. Big three, Nate Funk. He's got 13. Well, Southern Illinois, as you talked about, Doug, 14th in the RPI. And uh, one of the reasons they're so high in the RPI is they haven't played many bad teams. I mean, St. Louis, Indiana State, the only teams worse than 200 in the RPI that they've played. So they built this thing up by beating most of the yeah. teams they should beat and by not playing anyone bad. Yeah, they lost at, at Louisiana Lafayette. Now, they have to maintain this lead. And well, Milner catches the basketball, but couldn't see the set as well as we would have liked. Nate Funk catching the ball because he got a great down screen from his teammate, and it allows him to catch and shoot in rhythm and look for Creighton to continue. They have several different types of full court pressure in their in their gym bag. And they, they bring everything to the table, and their ability to shoot the ball from the perimeter allows them to stay in this game. Here's a little bit better look. There's the down screen. And if you're lazy getting out, as Stetson Harrison, remember, he's a right-handed player. Stetson Harrison, you've got to lift your left hand up to make sure that your hand is in the, the arm or the, the eye of the shooter. So Lucas do a good job handling the pressure there. It's a two-possession game. Ooh. Now Brooks is left open. That's generally a bad idea. He misses that one. But Harrison, the board, it's blocked by Day. And it's going to be Saluki's basketball. A lot of fight in the Blue Jays. A lot of fight in the Blue Jays. And for Southern Illinois, they have to find a way to manipulate this defense and create themselves an offensive look. A block called right there. Uh, Jamal Tatum just a little bit frustrated because on the previous possession for the offensive rebound, Darren Brooks came off a pick by Josh Warren. Josh Warren open on the roll. He doesn't hit him. So Jamal Tatum sees the hard hedge. He tries to feed Josh Warren. Fortunately, though, for Southern Illinois, hits off his hands, gets the ball to the best player, and that's Darren Brooks. And now he's got at the line a chance to extend the lead. Brooks, 79% free throw shooter. Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year last year has already set Southern Illinois single season record for steals this year with 75. Eighth nationally in that category. It's a great all around player, Doug. But keep an eye on that left thumb. The one thing, the one bugaboo is the ability to shoot the ball consistently from the perimeter. Watch that left thumb kind of get into the shot and go forward as his right hand goes forward. It's the only thing you'd fix in his shot. And I think if you tweak that, guy can play at the next level he does everything else. He's a big guard, he defends. And how many teams in the NBA don't have guards that pass the play? Funk was left open, misses the three. Creighton gets the ball off the deflection. Well, keep an eye on this. This is the defending Missouri Valley Conference player of the year. Watch the left thumb. If you're at home, you have a kid who does this, tape that thumb up. Yeah, it just gets into the shot just enough. And at times, it throws it off, and it doesn't have the perfect back step. Funk this time inside the arc. Same result as he misses that one. And a big rebound by Young, who's back in the game with four fouls. Final two minutes now. It's also the best free throw shooting team Southern Illinois is in the conference. So if you sense an air of confidence as they handle the ball against pressure, it's because they want you to foul them. I remember McKinney has four fouls, so he's probably not going to foul here. Well, time running down. Good defense possession for Creighton. Watch for Tatum on the pull-up jump shot. He tried to pull up. It gets knocked away. And Nate Funk gets caught, grab it inside. That's four now on Funk. So Funk and McKinney both with four. So if they get into a situation here where they do start trying to foul, that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, you can see an offensive defense switch. So they need to hit a shot, then call a timeout. Then you make the offensive defense switch. You press and try and get the players with fouls out of the game. They got to hit a shot in order to get into their press, though. Josh Warren at the line, 79%. Leaves that one short, Day the rebound. And here comes Creighton. Every possession critical now for the Blue Jays, down by seven. McKinney going to take it himself. He just put his head down in midcourt and took it all the way. 
I'm Ten shorts sure. for McKinney. I'm not sure if Funk knows he has four fouls because he almost tried to foul on that possession. Now the reason is he doesn't. Play. He doesn't only has three fouls. Okay. That foul was actually on Day. So Funk has three. McKinney has four. One minute left to play. Big hoop right there. The hanger from Tony Young. That's just a backbreaker. So under a minute, it is a three possession game. Funk. I gotta get something going here. That wasn't what they had in mind. Mathis missing and Southern Illinois looks like it will extend. The nation's fifth longest home winning streak to 22 games. Don't forget, tomorrow, NBA on ABC. What a great doubleheader. We'll start you off with the Spurs and the Heat. That's at 12.30 Eastern time. And then how about this one-on-one -on -one matchup? Kobe Bryant and LeBron James going head-to-head -head as the Lakers take on the Cavaliers. That's at 3.30. It's all tomorrow on ABC. Kobe play on ESPN. I mean, excuse me, LeBron played last night on ESPN. Just think if he was a sophomore in college right now. That's ridiculous. He is so good. Mathis. Hard to the hoop, can't get it to go, gets it back. And Mathis makes the layup. So Southern Illinois has missed a couple free throws here that have kept Creighton in the game. It's 66 61. And now Young's going to go to the stripe. You got to feel like with this, the, the best free throw shooting team in the league, the home win streak's got a chance to extend one more game. Oklahoma State, place I played at, Gallagher Iba Arena, the rowdiest arena in the country. Foon Arena at Air Force, difficult place to play, especially with their style of play. You've been to the new kennel at Gonzaga. Yep. Of course, a lot of that home win streak was built at the old kennel. Yes. But uh, that's also a very tough place to play. They did a beautiful job out there in Spokane. As Tony Young goes to the line, he'll be shooting two for the double bonus, and Young rolls the first one home. You have to wonder, though, why the Salukis don't call this place the kennel, or they have the dog pound, which is where the students sit near ear along the baseline. They need some type of name or moniker. You want to submit something? Uh, I'll think I mean, the kennel's already I, been I got, taken. I got 30 seconds left. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's game time. I mean, I'd say it you might have just be the pounds. Minutes. Just the pound. Call lane violation there on Creighton. So that very costly against Jeffrey Day. Young's going to get another shot at it. Got to do something and do it in a hurry. McKinney misses the three. And Young gets the rebound. And Young is headed back to the line. And remember, this is a big win for Southern Illinois, but, you know, this by no means seals the deal that they're going to the NCAA tournament. Great, a good win. They have some quality wins on the year. They beat Missouri. They beat Ohio State and Xavier. But you look at Southern Illinois. Wichita State comes in here in a couple weeks. Southern Illinois has to go to Normal, Illinois. That's their next game. The Redbirds coming off a loss, but they'll be fired up and ready to go in Porter Mosier doing a tremendous job. And SMS started the year at 1-6 in this league. They beat this same Southern Illinois team. Now they're at 8-6. and six. Well, Everyone you talk to says that that is a team with just unbelievable yeah. talent. People who have watched this league all year say that may be the most talented team in the league. Yeah, Blake Ahern is a, is a nice talent that not a lot of people know about. He's leading this league in uh, free throw percentage, but he's a guy that folks down there love his ability. But they have six or seven deep, and most people feel like they're now playing at a level where they could easily win the MVC tournament, which is known as Arch Madness. Funk for three, and he hits that one. Probably going to be too little, too late. We'll be your full timeout on the court. We'll have a full timeout on the court charge to... Brayton does call timeout, though. We'll be back in action on Wednesday the, the correct score is 69-64. Five-point ball game. Well, Dana Altman is one of these coaches that he is so well-respected throughout college basketball. Remember, had a, had a pretty good run at Kansas State. I mean, everybody thinks of Kansas State because of what Jack Hartman was able to do. But there's a reason that, even though Lonnie Kruger won some there, and he was a Lonnie Kruger assistant, they haven't won a bunch since. It's not because they haven't had you know, Tom Asbury's a heck of a coach at Pepperdine, but difficult place to win, especially in the expanded Big 12. 
and he was the last guy at Kansas State to beat Kansas. Well, they went to the NCAA tournament in his four years there, went to two NITs. Since he left, Creighton's gone to the NCAA tournament five times, Kansas State just once. Think about that, it's rivalry week, and Kansas State has lost 29 consecutive times to Kansas. That's not exactly an in-state rivalry anymore. No, at a certain point, I think it ceases to be a, a rivalry. But Dana Altman, you know, the last seven years, five NCAA tournaments, two NITs, and this looks like an NIT team. They gotta keep it going, though. They gotta keep winning a couple games because you want to get a home NIT game, especially with the Quest Center, which is just a beautiful brand new building in Omaha. Well, that works. Yep. Tatum ahead of the pack, and that will seal the deal if it wasn't already sealed. Seven-point lead for Southern Illinois, and they're going to get out of here with their 22nd straight home win, their 34th straight Missouri Valley Conference home win. Well, if you're going to guard the ball, you have to know if you're the last man, you cannot get beat deep. And that's the problem with this defensive set by Creighton as they brought everybody up, and Jamal Tatum goes long, and... Mass confusion, touchdown, Southern Illinois, and eh, I guess they gave him a couple extra steps. There is the correct score now, 71-67. So, I mean, maybe it's not in the books quite yet, but it's really right, close. Look, Duke, Maryland tonight, and we've seen Duke come sure. back at Maryland with even bigger margin. <laughs> Having trouble getting it in. They do get it to Tatum, and that. Here's your ball game. They get it ahead to Young, and classy move there by Young. He yeah, just pulls it right back out. It, yep. And these two teams obviously like each other. Tyler McKinney back in action. Still a pretty good story, but how about Darren Brooks and the Salukis? Well, Southern Illinois pulls it out 71-67. to Coming up next, Polynesian Power Islanders in the NFL.